welcome to my channel. Today we are back on Forza Horizon 4 and today we are checking out the two brand new car pass cars of the week. But before we do that, this week we've received uh, different seasonal events which you can win two other cars as you can see here. We've got the 1952 Hudson Hornet and the Citroen DS3 Racing. Uh, to do this you have to complete two seasonal events. You have to complete one which is uh, obviously the one with the Hudson and the other one which is the one with the Citroen. Uh, you can see the names and everything there displayed. To do the Hudson one it's rather difficult. Uh, you have to drive and uh, complete the races in a Reliant uh, Supervan 3. The issue is with that is that it has for both races in fact the driver tiles who you race up against have to be on expert level. This may not be a problem for some but for me it definitely was a problem. I couldn't really I couldn't beat them at all. Uh, however, with the DS3 Racing uh, Championship event, I found that really, really easy in the Bola EXR, which is... I'm just going to quickly show you if you don't know what that is. When the picture's like that. There we go. The, uh, the Bola EXRS. Doing the uh, that rate, that championship in that car was fantastic. I just decimated the uh, expert driver tires and won the car pretty easily. However, uh, doing the Reliant race to win the Hudson Hornet wasn't so easy. Um, somehow the driver tires can go around corners at insane speeds, which you couldn't. Because if you go around the corner, being a three-wheeler, the Reliant sort of went on its side and it rolled over or crashed into a wall because you couldn't control it. However, I did find an upgrade uh, available which someone very kindly has made over here. Uh, it is made by Patrick HV. Shout out to you, bro. He has, or she, whoever you are, have made a fantastic uh, tuning setup. It's, there's a restriction on how um, much you can tune your car. It's got to be a level... D500, you can't have any more than that, uh, so you have to have less than that, which this has obviously got to the maximum, or well, just under the maximum, at 499. This particular tuning setup that he, this guy has set up is fantastic. The car doesn't really roll that much, it does obviously, it's been a free wheeler, but it's definitely not as much. And because you are going so fast, the other driver tiles do get a tad confused and they, get, they start rolling over and causing complete chaos, so and you just destroy them. So, definitely, if you're going to do this, download that tuning setup and you'll be able to defeat them quite easily so that's to win those two seasonal event cars and I'll get them now while you can or during this week while you can because they may not ever come back I think they will in the, in the future but it'll be a long time from now it may be in another year or maybe more than that who knows no one knows so uh, yeah I'll get them while you can so let's get on to the topic in hand which is the car pass cars of the week so this week we received the 2017 Ferrari GTC for Lusso, which is the replacement of the Ferrari FF. Additionally, we've got the 1972 Lamborghini Jama S. Now that looks like a good looking car. Let's just test out the Ferrari first of all. I think it's in quite a good colour already, so I don't think I'll be playing about with the colours very often. Ooh, it does look like a, a facelifted FF quite a bit. It's like an 812 super fast estate. <laughs> Ooh, it's nice colours though. Hmm, I quite like it in that colour though, oh, rest of one button. That one, I'm going to keep it in that colour. Looks good enough as it is. It waits for it to start sorting itself out. Yeah, here we go. open everything up and take a look at this beautiful Ferrari engine. Now if you watched my uh, Italy GTO GTA 5 video or Grand Theft Auto 5 video you may have noticed um, uh, the Italy GTO is based off a Ferrari F12 TDF slash 812 Superfast and uh, when you open up the engine bay when I was said oh it looked like a Ferrari engine here's your evidence look at that it looks almost identical uh, in GTA but that is a V12 Ferrari engine and that looks amazing. Glad that Ferrari are still keeping their V12s although they have said that the 812 Superfast will be the last V12 naturally aspirated Ferrari. We may still be getting V12s but the other could be turbocharged 
or they could possibly have a hybrid system, whether they count that as being a hybrid, uh, naturally aspirated or whatever. Um, so yeah, so this this is one of the last as well, judging by the fact it's 2017, so it's quite recent. So let's stop looking at the engine bay. Now Ferrari interiors have never been my favourite, they've always looked a bit jagged, but anyway, let's just take a look at the boot while we're here. Yeah, reasonable boot, reasonable boot. It's got a, uh, some kind of storage ch uh, chest by the looks of things in there, uh, but if you remove that, there's quite a lot of space in there. But not enough, well it's like a, it's more of a coupe estate really, it's not exactly an estate, but it's not exactly a coupe hatchback either, so it's quite weird to say what it is, it's a bit hard to class uh, what car this is in, uh, but yeah it's got not bad boot space at all. So if we jump into the Ferrari interior, sit in the passenger seat so we can have a little look around at the interior, yeah it's not too bad, the only thing I just don't like about Ferraris, it, like for the real world, is the steering wheel, they just, there's too much going on with the steering wheel, like, I know Top Gear and all that have dissed this before in the past, but it's true, the indicators and all that are all on the steering wheel, it's a bit, bit un unuser friendly let's say, but yeah the general interior itself looks quite nice, uh, the 812 has got quite a lot of red inside, but this is quite uh, mild and quite neutral with the grey looking good, it's even got carpets which is quite nice, I know the Ferrari uh, 430 Scuderia doesn't even have carpets so it's good to see it's got some carpets, a bit of luxury in here somewhere, GT4 Luso badge down there, so that is the generic look about of the new GT4 Luso, or GTC4 Luso, I keep saying GT4, uh, let's just have a quick look at the upgrades and see what we've got, I can imagine again the visual upgrades aren't going to be brilliant there we go, this is the Forza thing, and the Forza thing again with those, whoa, it's a massive spoiler, it's a big wang as Black Panther would say. I definitely prefer it without that. Let's give it a drive. Now there are a couple of Ferrari noises in this game, there's uh, the F12 and then there's the 812 noise. For some reason, and also uh, there's a different noise as well, I think there's the F12 uh, TDF noise as well. There's three sort of different tones of Ferrari sounds in this game. The F12 sounds awesome. The 812, eh, not so bad. Uh, but the F12 TDF, not too bad either. Doesn't sound as good as the actual F12 Berlinetta. The F12 Berlinetta sounds awesome. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, they decided to put the F12 Berlinetta noise on top of the FXX, which makes no sense whatsoever because the FXX is a very high revving V12, where the, uh, well, I suppose even the F12 is quite a high revving V12, but it definitely sounds completely different in real life. Uh, but I don't know why, but even so, the F12 still sounds amazing, I just wonder whether this sounds the same. Without all my gibberish, let's just get on with it, and give it a bit of a test drive around my favourite circuit. Again, I don't know whether I'll do any, I don't think I'll do any uh, sort of like lap circuits around here, because at the end of the day, as I've mentioned before, it's a tiny bit unbiased in the, in the fact that the... Uh, the driver tiles get in the way and it causes the lap time to be different because of course one time the driver tile might be there and other times it's not so I can just overtake quickly maybe not the next time so it's a bit unfair we need to wait for turn 10 to release a system where you can actually remove the driver tiles from a race you should have a race to yourself then we'll have a, um, a good chance of doing lap times so I'm really just going to comment on how the well the car drives and looks and so far the looks is a thumbs up the car itself is a thumbs up for me I, I'm not complaining because it's not a Hoonigan car or anything like that, so I'm not complaining at all. I don't know what that red on the ground's all about, isn't it? Let's give this a try. It's not as good as I thought. It's not as good as I thought. In terms of the car sound. And it's really well done. I have got stability, uh, traction control back on when in the last video I didn't. Um, I normally drive around with traction control on, but for some reason last week I had it off. I think when I do my money making method, if you haven't seen that video, I recommend you do because you earn a million credits per hour, just about. Just about an hour, about an hour to the next one, I'm going But uh, you have to have the traction control off and everything, try and have it as hard as possible. But I've turned the traction control on just for the purpose of, your, of me doing those races earlier to get the Citroen DS3 racing and the Hudson Hill. But yeah, generally the car feels actually really good. 
it has approaching tag number, but generally the brakes do feel the tag number in this game as it is. In terms of how that feels, it feels really nice this car. Just generally it's not accurate in terms of what the drives are, so they always end up crashing the middle of that bit. There's a kind of cross with the car sound in fact. It's, it's a kind of cross between the Ferrari Enzo, how it should sound, and the LaFerrari put, in, put together. It's a bit of a weird noise. Now, if you think this sounds good and sounds realistic, I will show you what the F12 sounds like. This is how I, well, it, sound, it looks good, it drives well, and I'm pleased it's not a hooligan car or any crappy thing like that. But, it doesn't sound as good as I wanted it to. Uh, this is the trouble with this game, it seems to suffer extremely badly with engine sounds. Horizon 3 was epic, I, I loved Horizon 3 engine sounds, but they've really kind of crashed to the ground with this. These car sounds in this game. Although, I've got to admit, there are a few that sound amazing, like this F12 Berlinetta. Now, this is the sound I was expecting it to sound like. I do complain a lot, I do know. I, I know I complain a lot, but I love Forza, and I want them to make the best game possible, and I know they're capable of it, and they just don't seem to, and it's just, yeah. Especially, like, listen to this. expected to sound. At least close to this. If you haven't got one of these cars, I'm um, sure you want one now by the sound of this. Unless you don't like the noise for some reason, but it sounds amazing. But I just think it sounds amazing. The H12 Superfast sounds very similar to this, but it just hasn't got the quite the same tone. No. It hasn't got quite the same tone as this one does. Uh, the FXX, as I mentioned before, has the same noise, but as again, it doesn't make any sense because the FXX sounds a lot higher. Formula One kind of cross between this noise, which is kind of a shame because the uh, FXX is a really detailed car. It comes up with a traction control light, so that's why it's a little light detail. Uh, I can't believe how bad that car is. So let's go and check out the next car. I know I have kind of dissed the Ferrari a little bit, but again, I'm not dissing the fact that we've got the car. I'm just dissing the fact that it doesn't sound as good as I was expecting it to. That's the only thing I'm dissing. Uh, so we go over to the car pass. What have we got here? So we've got the 1972 Jama S. Now, I'm actually quite surprised that we've got this car. I didn't even know it existed, to be honest. But uh, they removed the Jalpa from the game uh, when they went from Horizon 3 to 4 which shocked me dramatically because I really expected that car to come back but it didn't which is such a shame but uh, yeah there's not many colour options for that but I do like the blue the blue looks really nice so I'm going to put that on immediately uh, wait for it to stop saving well it's finished saving really not stop let's take a look at this thing it's got some unusual pop up headlights they keep showing us well not really pop up headlights anymore down headlines. 
Let's take a look at this engine. I'm not quite sure what engine it has. I don't know if it's a V12 or a V8, but let's just have a look, see what engine it's got. I can't even see the injectors from here or anything. Let's have a look. Uh, by the looks of things, it looks like it's a 12. A 12? Just look at the. Uh, we we'll have to find out by the find out what it sounds like. Because I have no idea. I can't really tell whether that's a an eight or a twelve. It looks very big, which makes me think it's a twelve. But normally Lamborghinis at this time had V8s. But then again, it did have the Countach V12 uh, back then, so I suppose it could be a Countach V12. Uh, let's have a look at the boot before we have a look at the interior. A very wide boot, but a very thin boot. Wide but thin. Hmm. Quite nice textures in there. They've done quite a good job of the textures in the boot there. Let's have a look at this lovely interior. Come on, jump in. Beautiful steering wheel. Look at that. Absolutely lovely wood on the gear stick as well. Lovely, lovely. A really nice interior. It's very classical. It looks like they have to sort of directly sort of just taken the Jalper out and added this instead as a replacement for some reason. Mm. But the Jalper sounded amazing in Horizon 3, so I'm hoping this sounds as, as good to make up for the loss. But, um, yeah, it's got a beautiful wooden steering wheel, uh, wooden gear knob. An unusual place for the handbrake down there by your feet, which I think was quite a common thing back then, but definitely an unusual thing to see these days. The dials, I think they're from the Countach and the LM002 and things like that, so it's quite uh, normal. In that case, so let's jump out of here and let's have a look at the customization. Why you want to customize this, I don't know because it just looks amazing. Look at that. It very much it reminds me of another Lamborghini, uh, like the Uraco and things like that. Yeah. Never heard of this thing, so I'm surprised. I do like classic cars, I definitely, definitely do. Right, so let's go to custom upgrade and have a look what we can do to this thing. It seems like customization is a bit better than the last car. Uh, we looked at. Uh, so we've got this Forza upgrade which adds this huge bumper down there at the bottom. Or we can take the bumper off which looks, well, quite, quite, I don't know, I can't say it looks horrible but it looks quite mean. They look quite droopy when the lights are down. At the back we've got this horrible spoiler. And at the back again we've got the bumper delete. Ooh, there's unusual exhaust textures there because we've got some see through exhausts. That's not good is it? <laughs> Come on, Forza, don't ruin your cars like this by having texture glitches. You rushing your DLCs for some reason, people, because that's not good. You can't have see for exhausts. God. I have a funny sense that this is quite a rushed DLC in the fact that the Ferrari sounds weird. I think my question has been answered. That is a V12, and it sounds like a Countach V12. Is it actually a Countach underneath? I don't know anything about this. Is it actually a Countach underneath? Or 
It does draw black contact. Either they didn't really handle that well, this wheel was really heavy and the gears, gears were really hard to change. But it does handle them really well. I've even got traction control on and sliding around. It's definitely a good drift car. But also, when you don't want to handle like a great idiot, you can actually drive it quite nicely. Nice slow half acceleration. Look at that. Lovely, lovely handling. The Jama is all thumbs up for me. Uh, I like this a lot. I love the way it looks. It's definitely a very odd looking car. But I like it, I like the way it looks, I do love my old classic cars, so this is definitely a good one for me. I love the way how it looks, the sound, I'm a little bit shocked of. But then again, if it, it, by the looks of things, it's never come from 312, so it's going to sound like this. And the interior, lovely, love the wooden steering wheel. Would be nice if the interior was in like a tan or like a creamy colour, that would be quite nice, rather than more black. But yeah, performance wise, this car's really good as well, so I'm really happy with this. Right, last thing to check out on this video, oh, this video is already 21 minutes long as it is, let's um, just check out the Forza Fon shop vehicle of the week, see if it's anything unique. And the answer to that is no, it is not a unique car this week, we have got the 2010 Morgan Aero Super Sports, which is quite weird because we had a Morgan last week, which was the, Aero, the new Aero Super Sports. To be honest, I'm not sure whether I recommend you buying this car through the shop. It's 150 falls upon falls upon points, which is quite a lot considering that you win 60 per falls upon lives. So uh, that's about well, it's, it's not too bad in terms of effort to get there. But uh, I just think it, it'd be easier if you use my money method to be able to get that car for either a wheel spin or you can just win it from the auction house decently cheaply. I can't imagine them being particularly popular cars. But it's a good car. I like the 2010 Morgan. It's a nice car. Just a bit cross-eyed, a bit ugly from the back and the front. But I do like the car. So, yeah. So, we've got no unique Forza Fon car this week. But we have got two seasonal cars to win. Which I recommend you get in immediately. Again, to do the uh, the race to get the, um, the Hudson Hornet. Download that uh, custom uh, setup which I found. Which... They've done a really good job on that. It, I thought it, well, it saved me from a lot of anger, anyway, from losing all the time. Uh, so do that. The use the Bowler EXRS for the uh, Citroen DS3 Racing Seasonal Championship because that car's really, really good for that. And the Car Pass cars are really good. I, I really like them. The only thing I just don't like is the Ferrari GT4 sound. I just GTC4 sound. I, th I do think it should have sounded like the F12. Maybe it doesn't rev as high, or perhaps it's slightly deeper. Something like that, rather than whatever that noise is. It sounds a bit odd to me. But there we go. There is my review. Thank you very much for watching today. Hopefully, I will see you in the next video. Bye.